So after we've seen in the previous episode that we can do most of our color correction using only the primary wheels, let's see how we can refine our grades using the secondary tools. They are immensely helpful when it comes to balancing highlights, correcting the hues, saturation and luminance on certain colors, fine tuning the contrast and limiting those adjustments to only the ranges we want. Being able to make these fine adjustments will bring your clips to a whole new level. So let's get rolling. Let's begin with a quick primary correction in this first node reserved for exposure and contrast. By looking at the wafer, we can see that our highlights are in danger of clipping if we start pushing the contrast. So let's bring the whole brightness down using the offset somewhere in the middle over there would be perfectly fine. And now we can push the contrast just enough and let's bring up the gamma and let's bring down the gain, bring up the gamma again and then add some drama in the shadow again up the gamma and this is a pretty decent looking image. Let's create a second node using Alt S or Command S on Max and label it saturation and white balance. Let's add some saturation about there and let's check the vector scope for any possible color casts. So we can see our blob sits centered, meaning that we don't have any color cast in our image. We can check that using the parade as well. And sure enough, our highlights and midtones are aligned. We can probably bring up the red channel in the shadows just a little bit. So I'll reach over to the log wheels and push that bottom up just a little. This will make sure that we don't have any color casts in the darkest parts of the shadow, which would be in her hair. So since our video contains people in it, it would make sense that we should pay attention most to their skin tones. And that's where our secondary tools will come in handy to balance those out. We'll start by creating a new serial node and label it skin tone. And let's quickly check the skin tone hues by heading over to vector scope and making sure that our skin tone indicator is on. If not, you can just head over here and click the show skin tone indicator. Next, we'll head over to the power windows, create a circular power window and position it over her face. Head over to the highlight, enable it and let's check the vector scope. You can quickly see that the darker skin tone leans over to the yellow and green side. To correct that, let's head over to the hue versus hue curves Select the red swatch and rotate the hue until the skin tone is aligned with the skin tone indicator on vector scope. Exit the highlight mode and sure enough, we got rid of any green contamination in her skin. Let's adjust the power window so it covers her entire face. Add some softness. Zoom out so that we can see the whole entire image. Head over to the tracker, track backwards, go back to the point that we were before and track forward. And let's see how our tracker keeps up and we can see how it attaches to her face with no problem. Let's zoom in and check and everything looks perfectly fine. And since we are in the curves panel, let me show you a few tricks to manipulate color in your image. Let's create a new parallel node this time and name it blues. For instance, if you want to change the cyan hue of this towel, we can start by making sure that we are in the hue versus hue curves, then go ahead and sample the color of that particular hue in the towel. My swatch that I sampled was automatically added to the palette. And from here, we can simply manipulate that particular hue by just rotating up or down. And you can see how the colors are changing for that particular swatch. We can make the selection even more wider if you take the extreme points and widen them up. And again, do the same thing with the hue. Remember how this particular adjustment will affect the whole entire image. So if we want to restrict this adjustment only to the towel, we'll need to restrict that with the power window. So we'll head over to the power window. And again, we'll click on the circular power window, make sure that we have it just around that towel. We'll give a little softness to it. As before with the skin tone, let's just track it. Again, track backwards from where you are and then go back to the point that you were before and track forward. 
check your tracking to make sure that the power window sticks with it. We're all good. So everything seems good here in the tracker. Let's head back to our curves window. And now that we have it restricted only to that particular region and color, we can manipulate this hue even more by going into the hue versus saturation, then select again the swatch, which will be the same. Let's just manipulate the saturation, making it more saturated or less saturated. Here's an example of how the swatch didn't catch the lower sides of this image and that's because of our power window which we need to make it bigger so that it catches the entire portion of the towel. Going back to our hue versus saturation curve panel we can do the same thing and we can increase it or decrease it. Let's keep it up here. The next thing we can do in the curves panel, we can head over to the hue versus luminance, sample that color, and then adjust the luminance of that hue. As you probably realize by now, the curves panel offers you a wide array of control for changing the hue, the saturation, and the luminance, making them a very versatile secondary tools for color correction. Another powerful tool to keep in consideration for secondary color correction is using the custom curves. Here I already added two nodes, one for exposure and contrast and one for balance. We'll just go ahead and give this image a quick primary color correction. Let's push up the gain, then bring down the lift and bring up the gamma just to brighten up the image a little bit. And instead of using the contrast slider, we'll go ahead and use the custom curves and we'll give it a slight S-curve for contrast. So we'll just grab it from the mid-tones and push it up and then from the low mids and pull it down just so. Let's head over to the balance node and push up the saturation and let's check the image for any color cast. So head over to the vector scope and we can see that the image sits on the green side because of the blob is pushed down into that lower left quadrant. And sure enough, if we look at the parade, we can tell that by the imbalance in the three RGB channels with green peeking out at the top. So instead of fixing the balance from the printer keys or from the offset as we've learned before, let's do that in the curves. Let's go ahead and unlink this RGB channel so we can have individual control over each channel and select the green. Let's grab it from the mid-tones and just try to balance that out. Let's go into the red channel and push it up just a bit and then maybe lower the blue channel. All this time I've been keeping an eye on these RGB levels in the highlights and mid-tones. Let's also balance out the shadows about there and lower the blue channel. And so we have a well-balanced image and if we look over to the vector scope we can tell that the blob sits centered on the graph. We've covered a lot of ground with these secondary correction tools and they can easily make you feel intimidated the first time you try them out. But remember, as with everything, practice what you've learned on your own footage and ask questions in the comments. We're glad to help you along the way. See you in the next video.